Within the Bohr consensus, there is no perfect consensus. That seems a bit paradoxical, but in fact, it's not. You see, the Borg consensus, the Borg female consensus in reality, it, much like the Borg consensus in Starda, Stardust, <laughs> in Star Trek, is defined by its opposition to opposing forces. That is to say, the Borg can only assimilate the other. You know, and without the other, there is nothing to assimilate. So the Borg really needs some sort of opposition to exist, to be defined. Otherwise, there is no consensus, and consensus is built around assimilation. Likewise, with the female Borg consensus, in reality, uh, very interesting things happen when there is no opposition. It's no coincidence that feminism, although not primarily a hate movement, has been said many times, uh, certainly has uh, gathered much of its energy around the idea of uh, some sort of patriarchal oppression. You need a, a common foe. Because women, although they do have an in-group preference, which is demonstrable and has been studied and uh, is now uh, arguably uh, irrefutable, uh, that group preference needs to be put within the context of having some sort of opposition. right? Uh, so let's, we've talked about this many times, but the fact is, is that uh, women have differing interests, reproductive interests, and in general, uh, differing political interests than than do uh, than do men. Those interests, uh, if men have them, will be opposed, collectively speaking, by the Bohr consensus. But the Bohr consensus, if there's a lack of concrete opposition, will resort to bickering, infighting, and self-destruction. Now, this is typified in this article. I will be posting a link to. Uh, it is quite interesting and amusing uh, at the same time. Basically, you can read it for yourself. It's a bit long, but it's very interesting. A woman wanted to start a all-female company because of the quote-unquote uh, boys club in television production. Uh, much to her chagrin, she found out that the entire enterprise was a mess. Women were backstabbing each other, not doing their work. Uh, engaging in just completely tawdry behavior. You should read the article. It's very interesting. Uh, for example, some meeting he, she had with, with, a, with a man who was present in the meeting, some woman reached inside of her bra and tweaked her nipples at the guy at the official meeting. So this illustrates what I call the incongruities of the Borg consensus. The Borg consensus is only organized as long as there is opposition. And that's why... That's why uh, Feminism, being a perpetual at female advocacy machine, still needs a focal point uh, against which to advocate. So they advocate for themselves, but there also needs to be a polar opposite. Some sort. It's 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 like north and south. You need to uh, to advocate against the opposite of the pole. In this case, it's it's men's interests, whether they're feigned in their minds or not. That is to say, whether they're chimerical or not. Because after all, I mean. Uh, the, the patriarchy. Some feminists are still writing about this patriarchal control of this and that. But this serves the, the narrative for creating a congruous Borg consensus as opposed to an incongruous Borg consensus that we can see demonstrated in this article. I, I strongly urge you to read it. It's very interesting and amusing of women just literally, literally they destroyed the company by having an all-female staff. This woman, this woman who thought she would be doing herself a favor and a favor to her fellow female kind, and then coming to the conclusion that there is no sisterhood. There is a sisterhood, but the sisterhood is conditional. It's conditional on having some kind of concrete firm opposition that the sisterhood is opposed to, just like the Borg in Star Trek can only exist within the context of having others to assimilate to oppose them. There, I mean, the consensus is that you are to be assimilated and to, to agree with everything within the, within the Borg community. But if there's nothing around you, if there's no enemy to oppose, you're not, that, that's kind of not really relevant anymore. So in a general sense, women will vote and look out for their interests as a collective group, whereas men don't do that. On a much more individual level, on a smaller scale, what you see between women is uh, games of one-upmanship. However, these games of one-upmanship are not the games of competition you see within the male dominance hierarchy. They're quite different. You see, 
The female mind, the female physiology, everything about the female, the female essence, if you will, is geared towards seeking out some uh, being pampered, being privileged, getting the goodies. I mean, this is what they, they evolved to primarily for themselves as well for, for their offspring. This is how women evolve. They evolve to uh, to get stuff, right? In a in a context, in a context without any firm uh, male opposition. I'm using the term loosely. The perceived opposition. You know, no, no cause around which to rally for the sake of the so-called sisterhood, for the sake of the board consensus. What you have is devolution. You'll have bickering, infighting, lack of harmony, because each woman is, quote-unquote, competing against each other for the sake of getting more privilege, getting more good stuff, appearing to be the best, not so as to... Uh, like a man would compete as to have that status recognized, but the best in order to have a status recognized, not that that you can project it onto people, but rather that you can receive. So, in a in a in a, in a manless context, say in, in this office situation where you have just women fighting and bickering and uh, willy nilly total chaos, disorganization. What you see is, to begin to see, are the incongruities of the board consensus. And part of that is, like I said, not having a common cause to rally against the, the, the oppressive male, in this case, uh, perceive, perceived or, 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 or fictive or non-fictive. But the other element is that women will, will engage in a kind of competition of, of being pampered. You know, who, who is more worthy of being pampered? Who is more worthy of being... Uh, being venerated, if you will, of receiving all the goods, the cookies. You also see this in this article demonstrated, uh, this phenomenon, because the few instances where there were some temporarily, a temporary male employee, they all, uh, not only were there, was their behavior better, but they all tried to one-up each other in an effort to prove to who was the sexiest and what have you. Uh, pretty ludicrous. But, by and large, the Bohr consensus is only as solid and as congruous as the opposition it has, be that in Star Trek or in reality. If there are no men against which to rally, the Bohr consensus loses a lot of its momentum and it is reduced to infighting. This phenomenon doesn't exist amongst men. In fact, uh, men, when there are no women present, tend to get along better. There's uh, a lot more harmony, less violence. The exact opposite occurs with men. And that's an interesting topic in itself and something I'm going to be talking about at a later date and because it partially relates to uh, testosterone and the relationship of testosterone to uh, generosity and reciprocity. But that's a discussion for another time. Now, right here, I'm talking about the incongruities of the board consensus. And you've heard many stories, and I've seen them, I've witnessed them live, and you've probably experienced them, of, of women. Uh, Burn the Ender, who I've just discovered has his own channel. It's pretty good. I'd suggest you uh, have a gander. Uh, describes women just hating on each other. And this is what they do. This is because the sisterhood is conditional. The sisterhood is conditional on having firm opposition, whether that opposition is real or not, okay, in this case, men, that yes, the general female wheel will be looked out for. Well, feminism looks out for, the, is, is a perpetual advocacy machine for the common wheel, the common female wheel. That is to say, W-E-A-L, not the wheel that, that turns and rotates. It's a bit archaic, but it's appropriate here. This common female wheel uh, has to have some kind of opposing force, uh, you know. Like I said, the opposed, uh, the the, uh, the the oppressive patriarchy. Without that, it degenerates into well, utter chaos. And you'll see this uh, amply demonstrated in this article that I'm going to post a link to. And moreover, can you imagine? I mean, this is this is why uh, the the idea of an Amazonian civilization is so ludicrous. Uh, the, the level of degeneracy, uh, chaos, disorganization, infighting, and backstabbing that resulted in this office environment would likely be the result of a, uh, an all-female civilization. Nothing would get done, excuses would be made, and the pettiness, uh, the pettiness would be so extreme that uh, nothing could be accomplished. 
Once again, quite the opposite to what you see in an all-male environment. Men getting along, offering each other uh, uh, no double entendre, entendre compliments, uh, cooperating, reciprocating generosity. That's what happens in a in a all-male, non-female environment. And the opposite happens in the incongruous uh, board consensus environment. Like I said, you need firm opposition, and each woman is, is quote-unquote competing against each other to see who is more worthy of being pampered and getting goodies and being spoiled and so on and so forth. So the board consensus is conditional, it does exist. They have an in-group preference. Remember, that study that's, that I've cited many times, uh, that has been cited elsewhere, I mean, that study was done whilst comparing male and female groups. You know? I'd be interested in a study that focuses on, on cooperation amongst women without any sort of male uh, in presence whatsoever, or male admission or male mention. That could be very interesting. So speculative thought indeed on my part, but a uh, speculative thought that I think uh, could ultimately hold a lot of water because we've seen it happen time and again. No male presence, nothing to oppose, nothing to rally against per se, and the board consensus loses a lot of its solidarity and it becomes a, essentially a, a giant uh, infighting party of bickering spoiled princesses, each wanting more than the other and claiming to deserve more than the other. The incongruities of the board consensus. There you have it, folks. Take care.